In this video, I want to show an example of determining the Lewis dot structure of a molecule that has more than one central atom. Um, as these structures get bigger and bigger, or these, these chemical formulas get bigger and bigger, the Lewis dot structure can get more complicated. It also means that these structures have lots of multiple different types of solutions to them that are all reasonable, um, and they all represent a different molecule. So um, I'm going to walk through this one. It's CH3NO2. Um, so I'm going to first write out the, the atoms that I have. I've got carbon with four valence electrons. So I'm going to do um, a little chart here. So we'll have a number of valence electrons and the bonds that it needs. So I have four valence electrons here, um, and that means I'll have I'll need um, enough bonds to hit that octet rule. I'm really going to need four bonds. Um, I've got hydrogen um, with one valence electron. It follows the duet rule. It really only just wants two valence electrons, so it's going to need one bond. I have nitrogen, which will have one lone pair, um, and it has five valence electrons. That means it's going to try to create three bonds. Um, and I have oxygen, uh, where I've got six valence electrons, meaning I'm only going to need two bonds. Now I've got one carbon, I've got three hydrogen, I've got one nitrogen, and two oxygen. Um, my total valence electrons, if you like tracking those, um, oops. So for the carbon, it's going to be uh, four um, plus three for each hydrogen, or three hydrogens, each with one, plus one nitrogen with five, uh, and plus two oxygen, each with six. So that's going to be 24 electrons. So I can use that at the end of my structure to double check myself and make sure I haven't accidentally added an electron or removed one. Um, so looking at this, carbon needs the most bonds. So I'm going to start with that in the center. I want to draw my electron dot symbol. Um, I can add things to any side of this carbon because it only has unpaired electrons, which means I can kind of bond anywhere. Um, my one that needs the, the next most is nitrogen, and I'm, I'm just going to put it you can put it on any of these spots, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to line up my nitrogen so one of its unpaired electrons is paired up with this carbon um, or pointing at it. I'm going to draw my electron dot symbol again. And now that I have a bond here, oops, I have a bond, I'm going to, I can represent them as um, right next to each other right here, where one of these electrons came from that carbon and one came from the nitrogen. And I now have a bond and I can represent it with these two um, electrons side by side like this, or I can create a line. And I prefer the line. It helps me track um, my bonds a little bit easier, and it makes those unpaired electrons step, stand out a little bit more. Now this nitrogen has a lone pair. I am going to leave that lone pair alone unless I, I, I work my way into a corner where I can do nothing other than break it apart. Um, all right, and now I'm going to, I'm not going to do hydrogens yet because they only have one electron. Now I'm going to do my oxygens and I have two of these. So I'm going to add them around this carbon. Um, I'll put one here and I'll line up one of the unpaired electrons of the oxygen with the unpaired electron of the carbon and I'll, I'll put another one here. Um, and again, you can, you can have had this oxygen um, next to the nitrogen. You could have it next to the other oxygen. There's a lot of opportunities here to do different things. And they're all equally correct. So this carbon now, since I have two lone pairs lined up, I can have a bond in between my carbon and my oxygen, uh, which I can represent with two dots like this. Or my preferred method is a line. All right, now, um, before I add the hydrogens, I'm gonna do a check in on the number of unpaired electrons I have and see if I need to um, solve this structure with multiple bonds. Um, so I'm gonna highlight these. Oh, first I'm gonna highlight my lone pairs on oxygen because I wanna leave these alone as best I can. 
Um, so looking at just my unpaired electrons, I've got one, two, three, four, and five. So right now I have five unpaired electrons. I have three atoms left that need um, one bond each, which means if I add those hydrogens in my structure now, I'll have two unpaired electrons left. Um, and I can't have unpaired electrons because I'll have um, broken my octet rule, which is a thing that is possible, but not um, something that we are at yet and that we'll cover in this class. So that means these two unpaired electrons are going to become a multiple bond. So each um, two electrons will equal um, adding, so adding a, like a, a double bond. Um, if you've got more, like if you have four electrons, then you can add a double bond and then another double bond, or you could do a triple bond instead. Um, ring structures also work. Um, like a double bond would in terms of um, pairing up electrons without having to bond a new atom. So I've got a lot of opportunities here. I can create a double bond between the nitrogen and carbon or between either of these oxygen atoms. Um, I'm gonna create it between one of my oxygen atoms. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pair up uh, these two right here. So if I do that, um, if I pair up these two between the carbon and the oxygen, I'll create a double bond here and these electrons go away. Um, they're actually now right here in that bond. Okay, now I have three hydrogens. I'm gonna place them at each of my unpaired electrons now. Got one here and one here and one here. Um, and so each of those now, that hydrogen is bonding there so I can write those electrons as um, two electrons right next to each other. Or I can write them as a line for a bond. All right, and now I think I have a complete structure. I'll go around and double check that each of my atoms follows the octet or duet rule. Um, each of these hydrogens has just one bond, so they each follow the duet rule. My nitrogen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It has eight electrons around it, um, so that means it's following the octet rule. This carbon has four bonds to it. Those each have two electrons in it, so it has eight electrons, so it is following the octet rule. This oxygen here has four electrons in lone pairs. Um, and, uh, or you could say it has two lone pairs, each with two electrons. Um, plus it has two bonds each with two electrons, so it has eight. So it's following the octet rule. And same with this one right here. It also has uh, two lone pairs, each with two electrons and two bonds, each with two electrons or eight electrons total around it. So that one works as well. Um, and that's how you solve one of these larger structures. And then if I'm gonna look at the geometry of it, I'm gonna look at the geometry at, um, this nitrogen because it's a central atom, this carbon, and this oxygen because they're all bonded to more than one thing. There are a number of other structures that would work for this. Um, I'll draw a few just in case you came up with something different. So I could have had those multiple bonds in different places. I could have had a, a nitrogen carbon double bond. Um, and so then I would have only one um, hydrogen bonded to the nitrogen. And I would have uh, my other hydrogens bonded to the oxygens like this. That's a version. Um, another version might be creating a ring, four-membered ring. This is less likely in nature, but so my oxygens each have now two bonds. My nitrogen needs one more and my carbons will each get two hydrogens to it. 
So that's another option. Um, you can also do a ring where you have your nitrogens like this, um, and you have a carbon with a hydrogen, and then these two oxygens form a three-membered ring. It's another option. So there's, there's quite a few possibilities.